Hello and welcome to ITEN of Healthcare Solutions webinar. We're excited to present NextGen PM tools for managing unapplied deposits and multiple encounter visits. My name is Chelsea Grover and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for ITENIP. I'd like to take a moment to explain the process for today's presentation. First, I'd like to mention this webinar will be recorded and that we'll send out a copy of the slides along with the recording within the next week. Now, as most of you know, this is usually when we cover a bit of who we are with you, but since I promised in the webinar invitation to make this one brief, we're just going to jump straight into it. As an FYI, everyone's phone will remain muted throughout the entire time. You can use the audio control panel to let us know if you have any questions and we'll answer them all at the end of the... I'm sorry, let me say that all over again. We use the webinar control panel to answer any questions and we'll answer them all at the end, but you can ask them at any time. I also wanted to quickly mention that next week we'll be presenting an educational webinar on NQ, NCQA PCMH certification for NextGen Enterprise. If you're interested in attending that, shoot us a message in the questions panel and I'll hook you up. So let's get started today with quick poll. Give me one second here to launch it. If everybody will take a quick look at their screen and just quickly answer what functions are you looking to optimize? Are you trying to resolve a backlog of unapplied credits, process of copaid dollars, processing of deposit money taken for unapplied procedures, processing of prepaid money for services paid in advance, or create multiple encounters for a single patient visit? So again, if everybody will just take three seconds to answer that so we can get moving on. While you guys are answering that, I just want to you know, mention, as you guys know, we do everything NextGen from implementation to customization, hosting, and support. Uh, we do everything NextGen, so if you have any NextGen pain points that you'd like to you know, maybe correct, uh, feel free to shoot us a message, and we're happy to help with that. So let me finish closing this poll here in three, two, and one. Okay, so let's see what those results look like. So it looks like most of you are having trouble resolving your backlog of unapplied credits and processing of copaid dollars, and then a good amount of you are having issues with pretty much everything else. Uh, so I think that that's a great point to help us guide in what we want to focus on today. So let me get back to today's presentation. Okay, so now that that is done, uh, let me introduce today's presentation uh, Presentation presenters. Tom Seiko is the Business Development Manager at Itenif, and Joe Schultz is the Vice President of Product Solutions, which means that Joe and his team are the people that actually build these great products. So he's going to be in a great position to demonstrate them today. And without any further ado, I think that we're going to go ahead and get started. So Tom, I'll pass it off to you. Okay, thank you very much, Chelsea. And thank you everyone for joining us on our webinar today. Uh, on, uh, as Chelsea mentioned, practice management tools for managing copays, deposits, unapplied, and multiple encounter visits. Uh, this is the agenda that we're going to cover today. Uh, basically, what you'll learn is how these two add-on products, our unapplied and deposit manager and our multiple encounter billing manager software, can help increase the efficiency of the billing staff by enabling them to reduce uh, the time to process copay dollars and deposit money and unapplied dollars, and then uh, when you have to mentor in multiple encounters for a single patient visit. Uh, the format for today's uh, webinar is I'm going to take you through a couple slides in the beginning to give you an overview of each product and how it helps increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the billing staff. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to Joe and he's going to take you through uh, the demonstrations of each product. And each product demonstration should take about 15 minutes or so. And then uh, we'll come back and uh, answer any questions that you have. Uh, as Chelsea mentioned. So first of all, with the Unapplied and Deposit Manager uh, software, um, you'll see a common theme in all the products that we, we develop at iTentive, uh, add-on products for NextGen, is the main uh, goal is to increase productivity and increase efficiency uh, and make your job easier. So uh, with all the products, that's the, uh, the main uh, thought process that we have as we go into these. During the past 10 years, our clients have been asking us to write scripts and small programs for them to address uh, their unapplied balances on patient accounts. And during that 10 years, they uh, tell us we know what the common challenges are that they are having. Uh, in the past uh, couple of years, we've been keeping statistics on uh, the common challenges that are mentioned to us. 
And that's what you see here. So common challenges uh, that have gotten mentioned to us over the past, uh, as I said, eight to 10 years is the backlog of unapplied credits. They wanna be able to address that. They have an issue with that. Uh, they have an issue with processing of copay dollars and keeping up with that on a regular basis. And in the past couple of years, we've been hearing more about managing deposit money for upcoming procedures. The percentages that you see there on the right are the percentages of practices and health centers uh, that have stated this common challenge to us in the past couple of years, as I mentioned. So those are the statistics that we have been, been keeping. Um, as we go through the uh, uh, the purpose of, as I mentioned, the purpose of the uh, the unapplied deposit manager software is to increase uh, productivity and make the job easier. Uh, we do this by helping you to manage your copay dollars and and related unapplied balances with the software. Uh, allows you to effectively manage deposit money as well. Uh, so it is a, a very effective tool, and you'll see how that works in the uh, in the demonstrations that Joe takes you through. This is a slide that shows um, the processing of unabated balances overall and, and what you have to go through as far as an overall process at the high level. Typically you have to find, uh, you go through a step to find the credit, the unapplied balances on the, on the patient accounts, and then you go through a review process and then a posting process. When you're finding the balances, you need to find the accounts that have the unapplied balances on them. Then you have to evaluate uh, those unapplied balances as far as what you want to do with that unapplied balance. You know, how do you want to apply that money? Then you have to create the transactions to move the, the money around uh, and you go through that process. Once you're through with that process on all of those items, then you typically uh, review, go through a review process of those transactions that you just created uh, to make sure they are, they're doing what you want them to do. Uh, so you'll either review them or make changes to them. And then once you get the, through that review process, then you go through a posting process where you actually post the, the batch to, uh, to NextGen. What the Unapplied Deposit Manager software does is takes care of all the, what I'll call the heavy lifting that you do on the front end with regards to finding the unapplied balances. So based on the rules that you give, uh, you, you will find the unapplied balances. Based on the rules that you give it, it will uh, evaluate and uh, and do the actual uh, creation of the transaction uh, for you as well. So it'll do all that work for you up front uh, and you maintain control of the view process, you maintain control of the posting process. So with the, uh, the second demonstration that you're gonna see and that we're gonna talk about today is the multiple encounter billing manager. And this allows you to effectively create multiple encounters for uh, a single patient visit. Um, it's a product that we created uh, that has been requested by a few of our clients. And uh, these practices add a need for creating several encounters for a single patient visit. So let's say, for example, a certain procedure that you have, you typically have to enter in professional charges and anesthesiology charges and surgery center, center charges. Typically, you would have to go to multiple screens to be able to enter that information in. Um, so you might have to toggle through a couple screens. You might have to leave one practice and go to another practice if you have multiple practices set up at NextGen. Um, and this became a, you know, a, consumer, a, cons a consumer of time is what these uh, situations created. And with the billing manager software, that we created, it allows you to do this from one screen rather than have to go to multiple screens. And uh, so it, it significantly increases um, efficiency and severely reduces the amount of time that it takes to enter into multiple charges. And you'll see that in the demonstration that Joe takes you through. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Joe and he's gonna take you through a demonstration. Great, thank you, Tom, and thank you to everyone for taking an hour out of your day to attend our webinar here. We're gonna go ahead and switch machines, so you may see a little bit of flicker as we move over to the demo environment. I'm gonna go in the same order we saw in Tom's slide, so I'm gonna cover the Unapplied and Deposit Manager first, and then the Multi-Encounter Billing Manager second. 
So let's go ahead and jump in with the Unapplied and Deposit Manager. Uh, this tool consists of two components. One component is a job that would get kicked off by the BBP and run nightly to do the actual work. And the other component is the user interface where you set up the rules for what work it's going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you on a tour through the uh, user interface here and show you what it's capable of doing and how it operates. For those who have access to this uh, interface, it would show up in their next-gen add-ons menu. Normally, you'd only give one or two people in the practice access to this just so they don't create rules that end up conflicting with each other. So in this view that we have here for the rules, um, in the top part of the form, we have four rules that we've set up. And in the bottom part, when we click on each one, we get the details for those rules. Now, you could create all the rules you want is one kind of uber rule, one, one giant one that does everything. But for the sake of the demonstration today and explanation, I broke them up into the four common scenarios that we run into. Now, an important takeaway from this is that the tool is not limited to these four common scenarios. You can define your own rules based on the various operations that are available. I'll show you how that works in a few seconds, but first I wanna take a moment and go through these different scenarios and how they look here. All right, so the first one I have highlighted is the copay cleanup. So we have clients who come to us and say, you know what, we didn't have our copays properly set up, we never got them um, applied down to the encounters, and we just wanna go through and look for specific dollar amounts, specific, usually even dollar amounts, right? Like five, 10, $20, things like that and force those onto the line items of the encounter. And we know for about 80 plus percent of our encounters, this will hold true and we'll keep it and then we'll go prune out the other percentage uh, that we don't want. But the key is it's you know easier to automate the 80% than to do you know the actual work. So if I click on this line up here, copay cleanup, we'll see our rules down below. And for this particular one, the rule that's most important is uh, this first line here. So we have lines that start with a type, like encounter unapplied or account unapplied. So that's which unapplied value you're working, working with. And then the scope and the scopes for both the encounter scope and the account scope affect the, kind of how it gets processed. Are we limiting it to certain transaction codes, certain locations, certain providers? Uh, do we wanna prioritize uh, certain SIMs over other SIMs, that type of thing? But the one that does the actual work here is this first line. And if we read it across, it almost reads like English, right? Encounter unapplied equals some specific amounts. Go ahead and apply it up to the unapplied amount. In fact, we can see that over here in the summary column where it took those choices that were made in each of the columns and basically put it together. Now we'll see in the summary column that it also shows you what the specific amounts are. The good news is for these rules that require some parameters, you'll get a button here in the pop-up column and you can go ahead and click that button to get into the specific parameter form for the type of parameter you're looking for. If this was gonna be providers, you'd be able to look up and add several providers. In this case, we're just inputting a bunch of dollar amounts. Okay, so we go ahead and this basically would be a rule. If we went to a client and they were solely doing copay cleanup, we just have this one line and that would do the work that they needed. Um, these other two lines really affect how this rule interacts or more appropriately doesn't interact with the other two, uh, other rules that are up here. So because we've broken it up into several rules, we don't want the copay cleanup looking at things that the other rules are gonna be doing. And I'll explain these uh, encounter scopes and stuff in a few seconds here. So copay cleanup, that's a real easy case. We tell it, you know, encounter and apply equal specific amounts, apply it up to that amount and we give it the amounts, real straightforward. Now, sometimes we run into clients, and I saw this was probably the majority case on the survey we did at the beginning, I think this fell into that uh, top one there, that just have a whole mess of copays out there, and their objective is to get, um, actually a whole mess of unapplieds out there, and the objective is to get those unapplieds down onto line items. Uh, we've had clients with several hundred thousand dollars sitting out there in unapplied that just aren't being properly accounted for. So they may be on a mission for several weeks or months to get that money resolved. And that's kind of what uh, this particular rule does here. 
So if we look down below, we can see, again, reading left to right, what to do if the encounter unapplied equals the patient amount. Well, apply it up to the patient amount, obviously. If the encounter unapplied is greater than the patient amount, we have two choices for this one. We can apply it up to the patient amount, or we can apply it up to the unapplied amount, which would then create a credit, right? So we can go ahead and over apply it if we need to, and then have a credit on the line items. And then we could take that credit and refund it back to the patient. Um, our refund manager tool works great for that, but we have some clients who do that process manually because they don't do a lot of refunds. So this is equals greater than, and of course we have uh, you know another case here for less than. So those are kind of your basics. But what if there's nowhere to apply part of that unapplied amount? Well, we have a rule here for the remaining amount. Let's move it up from encounter unapplied to account unapplied. And of course, just like when you do it manually today, the account unapplied can be used on other encounters where there's a need. All right, so this basically sets up your, uh, you know, kind of standard encounter unapplied processing. We're not just taking the equals only case because you can go ahead and do that in next gen, but we're taking the greater than, less than, and moving the remaining up to the account to be pulled down for other encounters should you desire. Now we have a couple scope rules here. We have skip encounter with certain transaction codes. And basically I've told it to, you know, skip transaction codes that were used to create um, the unapplied from the other encounters. So if uh, we don't want to conflict with other rules and the other rules, uh, like I have them set up here, are based on different transaction codes, um, it basically, you know, just isolates one rule from the next. But an even cooler one is let's say it limit encounter scope to insurances being equal to zero. So let's not worry about applying the unapplied until the insurances have fully paid up and we have an accurate patient balance. All right, and that's kind of what this encounter scope rule does here. And again, we just kind of build those left to right. Now that's all great. That's the encounter side of the coin where we're taking money within that encounter, trying to use it, if not moving it up to the account. But now up at the account level, what are we doing? Well, I'm going to skip this one here because I'll talk about that in deposit management in a little bit. Um, but account unapplied, the remaining amount sitting in account unapplied, try and apply it to the oldest encounter in charge and walk it forward till you run out, right? That's real simple. Uh, we had some clients who came to us when we first uh, created this and said, this is great but sometimes we have money that sits out there indefinitely because you know it's a patient who maybe moved out of the area and isn't coming back or was just in for a one-time procedure and might not be back for a long time. So we came up with another rule that says, well, if money sits, the account unapplied remaining amount sits out there too long, then let's go ahead and age it to a new encounter with a dummy SIM that we create up with a, we create with a $0 value and when we push it down there and push it against that SIM, again, it ends up being a credit on that encounter against this line item that then you can go harvest those and issue refunds. And again, our refund manager tool can do that or you can do that um, manually, depending on how you do refunds today. But this was kind of a cool one because it basically says if the account sits stagnant for some period of time, in this case, 45 days, no one touches it, no new appointments, no new encounters, um, nothing's going on on that account, then, you know, age it out and then we'll, you know, create that credit that we can then refund back to the patient. And again, similar to the encounters, we have the account scope where we say basically, you know, let's not even bother with the account until the insurance is settled out. Again, you don't have to use these rules. You can use them if you want to. Uh, you pick and match the ones that you want. For example, if we want to go ahead and add one, we can say something like, you know, encounter scope. So your next choice changes based on what you picked before it. And we can say things like, you know, apply first or only apply first to certain SIMs. Uh, we can skip encounters with certain attributes. We can uh, skip certain charges that match certain SIMs. We can limit encounters. So you have a lot of different options here. I'm gonna go ahead and say limit encounters. And then instead of transaction codes, maybe I'll pick, you know, less names and range. Maybe I just want to process part of this because I'm testing right now. And then I can say, you know what, give me everything that goes from A 
you know, to W, right? Or it can be A to B if you have a really big database, that type of thing. So now we put that in here and this is part of our rule. So we can go ahead and save this and this line moved up where it belongs next to the other encounter scopes. All right, so this is a case of a more complicated rule that can be built. We normally install this with you in your test environment and we'll set up some of the initial rules. In fact, we have some templates to generate kind of the basics of each type of rule or you can just start from a, you know, a blank sheet and create the rules if you want. Once the rules are created, normally you'd hit save and then it would be launched that night by the background business processor. However, while you're testing, you can go ahead and say, you know what, I'm gonna do a quick run here where it'll allow it to run for several minutes and it'll go ahead and do that work for us. All right, so now it came back with a screen of the work it did and these transactions that are shown here on the screen are actually in a next gen batch right now and we'll um, look at that in a few minutes. But we can see that um, some of these were the encounter side rules and some of these were the account side unapplied rules. All right, so we can see what's going on here. And you can save these out to Excel if you wanna you know, save it to verify against your uh, next gen system later. All right, so that's kind of the basic cleanup rule. And I also took you through you know, how to test it and make sure you get the results you want. If you don't like those results, you go delete the batches, tweak your rules and then run it again. Um, another case we ran into is sometimes we have clients who are using third party systems to take patient payments. And because of various timing issues, those payments end up in unapplied and then they languish out there in the encounter unapplied. So, um, you know, we can build rules to do that, to go look for those payments coming in from the third party system. And what we're using in this particular case is a certain transaction code. So we're looking for encounters with certain transaction codes. And then we, you know, use our transaction code for the money coming in from the uh, external system from the kiosk. And again, you know, we have our greater than equals less than. Um, we're gonna wait till the encounters zero out so that we take care of that. But just another example of a type of rule that you can go ahead and create. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was deposit management. So we've talked about kind of general unapplied issues um, and general unapplied amounts where you have these amounts and you can basically use them anywhere. All right, um, you know, if the patient really doesn't care, they just wanna get their bill paid. Deposits are a little different because a patient normally gives you a deposit for some specific future use, okay? And you wanna reserve the money for that. And the challenge we have in NextGen is that when stuff goes into unapplied, especially account unapplied, there's no way to purpose it. It's just in a big bucket of money. So clients come up with all kinds of um, creative ways to, you know, somehow earmark this money or um, flag it with dummy sims or comments and stuff like that. So what we came up with was a way where you could um, create a mapping of transaction codes used to intake the money to specific services that the money can be used for. So we can go ahead and look at these cross references. And here I have an example of one and we call these tag sets. All right, and a tag set really is um, just that mapping that we were talking about. Okay, where we're setting up transaction codes. So in this case, we set it up with a fertility group. So we came up with transaction codes for fertility treatment, surgeries, in vitro. So these are your next gen transaction codes. So you pick one or more of those and you give it a name, okay? What we call the tag. And this name is anything you wanna call it, something meaningful to you. In this case, we called it fertility deposit. So if money comes into next gen and goes into unapplied and the transaction code used to intake this money was the patient deposit fertility, the system will go ahead and note the, the amount of that money and it'll note the tag for that. Then on each night when it runs, it'll go ahead and say, hey, do I have money out there that I can use for specific services? And when it encounters on the right-hand side here, one or more lines with that same tag, 
it'll look over here and go, okay, here's the SIM or several SIMs on several lines that I can use it for. In this case, we just have the one SIM. Or if you have your modalities um, set up and organized nicely, instead of maintaining individual SIMs, you can go ahead and um, you know, put them in a modality and just reference the modality. You know, for example, if you had 17 of them and you didn't want to list all 17, you could go ahead and do it that way. So just different options that are available. But the takeaway is you're earmarking money by using a transaction code to intake it against what services it can be used for, and the system will only use that amount for these services. All right, because that's the big difference between just generally taking money and taking money for a deposit. Uh, patients get angry when they leave a deposit for something specific and it's been used up on, you know, just a general visit that they came for in the interim, right? They're like, didn't I leave you money for that because this general visit I'm going to submit under this insurance. Uh, so, you know, the system will go ahead and track that. So that's, you know, a big time saver for uh, groups who do, especially specialties, who take a lot of deposits for the system to go ahead and manage that. All right. So the key is, again, here, you can set up one big rule that does what you want it to do. You can set up the rules um, to run all the time, or you can disable them, or you can just try them overnight one night. So you have many different options on how you want to use this. Again, We'll work with you in your test environment to get it going. We'll give you some ideas and some templates to get started, and then we'll set you loose to try different scenarios. And then when you get it where you like it, we'll go ahead and work with you to move it into production. All right, so the end result, the work product from this is that you're gonna get batches in next gen, um, either in you know several minutes if you're testing it interactively, or you'd come in the next morning and these batches would exist and you could go ahead and walk through them and take any action you want on them, uh, prune certain transactions out, or if you realize you missed something in your rules, delete the batch, then go back, update your job, and then let it rerun. So the Unapplied and Deposit Manager, again, we're looking to speed up the unapplied process by being able to build a custom set of rules that match the scenario you need resolved. And there may be several of those, and they may be uh, time-based. You may start out doing your cleanup, and then once you get your cleanup done, worrying about the deposits, those types of things. So it's great. It's very flexible, and it's based on 10-plus uh, years of us writing custom scripts to do stuff. What we did is we kind of merged those together and came up with a user interface. So now you can control how you want the unapplied to happen. Now let's shift gears now and talk about the multi-encounter billing manager. The multi-encounter billing manager is for those scenarios where a patient comes in for some event and you need to create several encounters. We often see this with uh, practices that have a surgery center. So they have the practice fee, uh, professional fees in there. They have the facility fees. They may have anesthesia fees. They may have some special equipment and they bill those on separate encounters. There are some specialties that use this for other purposes, um, but in the scenario that's set up in the demo environment that I'm, I'm going to take you through here, that's how we've configured it. So we configured this one for eye care. Someone comes in for you know eye surgery. So normally where this starts is when the patient presents for their appointment, at least one encounter gets created. Okay, and that encounter will be created, you know, at the front desk in NextGen, and they'll tie all the insurances to it. And um, that'll be kind of our template for the other encounters that get created. All right, so later on when they have to input these other charges into the system, they're going to um, have their... Uh, you know, other screen that they work off of that's going to have those other charges and it's going to have the encounter number of the base encounter. If you don't know that encounter number, we have a search where you can find it by name and date of birth, great things like that. But in this case, I know my encounter, it's encounter 1209. So I pull that up and what I'm seeing here is this is my base encounter and we decided the base encounter would be in the professional charges group. And what we've done is we've taken the relevant fields from the next gen encounter on this line the mouse is going across and from the next gen charge on this cluster of three lines down here 
and put it into a grid form so that we can show several of these on the same screen. Now, we can customize these groupings of what you need to create for the several encounters. And I can show you real quick before we go on how we did it for this eye care group. All right, so we have the professional charges, specialty equipment, uh, surgery center, and anesthesia. Now, maybe you just need to create three encounters, maybe you need to create five encounters, um, but again, you know, we'll help you set this up and get it going. Uh, we may have the scenario where we want to use the uh, base, base encounters insurance across the other encounters that get created. Uh, maybe the uh, rendering and referring, uh, the rendering becomes the referring on the surgery because there's a different surgeon. So all kinds of options that are available. But the, you know, the thing to remember here is we base a lot of this off of the encounter that comes, that gets created when the patient comes in. So now we pull this up, there's an encounter and a charge out there. If we wanna go ahead and create our other um, encounters, we can simply right mouse, add new encounter, and we're gonna do our ASC um, encounter. So we're gonna have our default uh, practice over here. Again, it switched practices. And Then we can go ahead and pick, uh, you know, the rendering provider, right? That's important on an encounter. So we can go ahead and do a search here if we want. So let's see if we, um, I forget which, there we go, that's the guy. So we can go ahead and accept, bring that back. Now we have that, we can set the patient type, we can set the, you know, facility. So these are all parameters that you'd have on the encounter screen in NextGen. Now you don't see the insurances because it's gonna map the insurances from the base encounter. Also, if this is this patient's first time in this practice, it'll convert them from a globe to a chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and now create a new charge and I can use the right mouse or down here, there's a list of hotkeys. So if I don't wanna take my hands off the keyboard, I can simply do a control N for a new uh, charge. I can go ahead and enter the beginning of the service item. It'll do a search for me. I can bring that back. And now it's set up a charge. If I wanna create another charge, I can go ahead and do that too and bring that back. All right, so now this encounter, we don't have an encounter yet, number yet because it only exists here in memory. We haven't told it to do the work in next gen at this point, And we're gonna tell it to do that in a few seconds. Uh, it's also smart enough to do anesthesia, so we can go ahead and create a new anesthesia encounter. All right, and I'll go ahead and pick someone here, set up a new charge. I'm gonna pick an anesthesia sim. We'll pull that in. And as we click on each line in here, we can see the header highlight. So anesthesia is often time-based, so it'll do the rounding rules based on what's set up for the insurance. So I figured out, you know, it was under 30 minutes, uh, which came out to nine units. It went up here and did the, uh, you know, the $90 times nine unit is $810. So it did those calculations for us. And again, this encounter is just in memory here right now. It hasn't been created yet in next gen. So from this one screen, we've created two new encounters with, uh, you know, several charges without having to bebop around, you know, changing practices, getting back into the patient, all that in NextGen. So now when we hit save, it's going to go ahead and create those in NextGen and then position us to enter the next encounter number. Now, if we want, I can go ahead and show you, I just searched up the one we did that we got the new encounters created in the other practices. All right, so we can go over here to the surgery center and pull up that. So, and this is the encounter that just got created for us. And make sure I have the right one here. 32, that's why it looks strange. So let's go back and pull up the actual 32. There we go. So that's got both our charges now. 
All right, so the main key here is that you get a single screen, you get to input all your information for the encounters and the charges. It pulls the information automatically from the encounter that was created when the patient checked in. And the whole key here is to add productivity to your charge entry staff by not having them have to switch all around next gen to do this type of work. We got multiple encounters, they could be in the same practice, they could be across practices, all on one screen. All right, so that's how the multi-encounter billing manager operates. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it back to Tom now to kind of close up and then we'll take some questions and answers. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. And uh, we're going back to, to my screen here. Okay, so we just saw a demonstration of two of our products that increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the billing staff. The Unapplied and Deposit Manager software, you saw a very robust and flexible uh, piece of software that enables you to uh, clean up a backlog of unapplied money that might be sitting out there, allows you to uh, maintain an ongoing daily maintenance of the copays or any third-party payment transactions through like a kiosk or a, a tablet, and then uh, allows you to effectively manage uh, deposit money as well. And then the billing manager software, you saw a very flexible and efficient uh, software product that allows you to um, enter in multiple encounters and charges for a, a single patient visit. So with regards to, uh, to next steps um, after this, if you have uh, any questions with regards to either the products or what you've seen or heard during the webinar, uh, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to us and, and we'll get uh, the information that you need. If you would like to see a more in-depth uh, demonstration of the product or uh, both products or one product and uh, give you an opportunity to ask questions as it specifically pertains to your practice or to your health center, and as it specifically pertains to your processes, uh, we can schedule that with you as well. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Chelsea and she's uh, will take any questions that you have. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Joe, for the demonstration. And again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, we only have a handful of questions, so if you have any burning questions, please feel free to ask. This is the time. We're just gonna go through them in the order that we've received them. So we're gonna start with the first one. Can the Unapplied and Deposit Manager help us with unapplied money coming in from our third party portal as an unapplied? Joe, you wanna take that one? Sure can. Uh, yes, it can. And that's been a case we've started to run into uh, more often as these third party systems uh, get traction in the next gen market. And again, you know, it's it's usually no one's fault. It's mostly just a timing or setup issue. But, you know, we've had clients end up with hundreds of these sitting out there that they need to get resolved. So that's, you know, one particular use of this tool. OK, great. Next question. Can billing manager be configured for other specialties besides OBGYN? Yes, it Joe? can. Um, it can be Sorry. configured. <laughs> no problem. I just took my mute a second to disengage. Um, it just, uh, you know, it can be configured for, you know, basically any specialty where you need to create several encounters for a patient visit. And we'll help you set that up if, you know, it's two encounters or, you know, three different practices all different combinations, we can go ahead and build that with you. So it's really built to be flexible as opposed to, you know, for a single specialty. Off the top of your head, can you think of any other ones, Joe, just to help our audience out there? Uh, really, it's, you know, any specialty, but, uh, you know, it's gastro, it can be used in ortho, it can be used in, uh, you know, I, I think a, a big market is specialties who have their own surgery center, but also just specialties with complex billing. Okay, perfect. And it looks like this may be our last question, but again, we'll stay on for another minute here in case anybody's in the middle of typing more. Uh, what does the install process or training look like for the unapplied manager? I'm guessing they mean unapplied and deposit manager. Yep, yep. Um, the install is relatively straightforward. We'll work with your IT team to go ahead and get it set up in your test environment. Then we'll spend 60 to 90 minutes with you after that install, working with you in your test environment and doing some, you know, really basic what-if scenarios and showing you 
um, how the tool works, but also inquiring about, you know, which phase you want to accomplish first. Are you doing cleanups? Are you jumping to deposits? Do you have something unique? And we'll help you kind of build out the basics of that. And then again, we'll leave you to, you know, to your own devices to go ahead and, uh, you know, try different variations on that. And you're welcome to reach back out to us with any questions or do a follow-up meeting. We'll be there to support you. But the, the key is once you have it working how you need it, then, you know, we'll work with IT to get it installed in production. And, you know, we can set up those same rules with you in production. Okay, thank you, Joe. Well, it looks like that might be all that we have for today. But, uh, you know, if you think of anything more, you see both Tom and Joe's information up on the screen. Feel free to reach out to them directly. Otherwise, you can always reply back to the email that I'll be sending within the next few days here with the link to the recording and slides. Basically, any way that you can get a hold of us, we're happy to help. That's why we're here. Um, feel free to reach out to us, truly. And again, if you have any interest in uh, learning more about that upcoming webinar that I mentioned previously, feel free to, to shoot us a note and I'll get you registered for that as well. So thank you again for joining us today. And oh wait, looks like we might have another one. Hang on, I have a question. Okay, we are waiting, somebody has a question. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for that person. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry, I totally missed that. I see it now. Um, if a patient is yet to be seen in ACS, but was previously seen in one of our other practices, would the information cross over or would it need to be submitted to the new practice prior to entering the ACS facility charges? For, for that type of scenario, I assume um, because you're talking about facility charges, this is the multi-encounter billing manager. Uh, we'll work with you on that to kind of sit down and, you know, discuss your flow. So definitely, you know, reach out to Tom and he can set up a more in-depth demo between us. And, you know, the key will be us understanding your flow of, you know, where, if you're inputting the charges or if the charges flow over and how we want to best accomplish the end result with you of the multiple encounters. Okay, and it looks like uh, Yasmin, looks like we're still waiting on you. I'm guessing that you're in the middle of typing a question, so we'll hang on for a couple of minutes here for that as well. Uh, in the meantime, if anybody feels like j dropping off, feel free. Again, I'll, I'll send a follow-up email with a link to the recording and slides within the next couple of days. We hope to see you at our next webinar as well. And thank you for joining us today. And if you feel like hanging on while we answer more questions, feel free to do that as well. Joe, anything else you want to mention while we're waiting? Um, you know, again, again, thank you to everyone. And, you know, keep in mind that these tools, we have kind of uh, a high involvement in the installation. We don't throw the software over the wall. We actually take time and understand your business and what you're trying to accomplish. And the key is, you know, we're, we're solution finders. So we want to help you actually solve your problems as opposed to just selling you a tool. And that's important for us that when we're done with, whether it's, you know, multiple encounter billing manager or unapplied and deposit manager or refund manager or any of our other tools that you, when we're done with the install, it's, you know, it's working and you're using it productively. Okay, thanks, Joe. And uh, Yasmin, I think that we're just gonna have Tom reach out to you independently after this webinar so that we can answer your question directly. Um, and thank you all again for joining us today, and, and hopefully we'll be in touch soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a great okay, afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.